how could we show in this picture that, that, that the electrons are really spread out? Well, there's no great way to do that, but one thing we can do is draw resonance structures. For example, we could draw a resonance structure like this. There's this resonance structure that shows, now this is another legal resonance structure we can get from this picture, and this shows that there really is also electron density in this region between these two side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals as well. This also gives us some, so what's the real molecule look like was well, really a blend of these two pictures. The real molecule is a blend of these two pictures because the electrons can be either on the ends or between the two middle carbons. In fact, even though we haven't said this before, resonance is always based on this idea of um, electrons being spread out between side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. Resonance is always based on this idea of electrons being spread out between side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. And the different resonance structures are just a way to try to convey all the different places the electrons can be. The electrons could be here, here, or here. And there's a, another resonance structure, of course, where I move the electrons to the right. I could have also moved the electrons to the right and put the negative charge over here and the positive charge over here. So there's a bunch of different resonance structures here. None of these pictures by themselves fully convey all the places the electrons are spread out. But this picture shows you more clearly that the electrons can be spread out in all four places. When you're ready, what's the hybridization of this carbon? SP2. That was good. I signed all of them. How about here? SP3. And here? SP2. Does this molecule have any p orbitals? No. That's right, no p orbitals. Is this molecule conjugated? No. No, it's not. It's important to see the difference between this and the previous example, so it's good that you saw that. Why not? Because the p orbital over here is not close enough to this atom to overlap with it. They're separated by this atom over here. So maybe I should have included this idea of three or more adjacent atoms. Unless the atoms are adjacent, you can't really have overlap between them. If we were going to draw the orbital picture, There's a pi bond on the left and a pi bond on the right, but these two p orbitals are too far apart from each other to have any effective overlap. So the electrons, these electrons are not really going to be having any appreciable uh, amount of density in between these two orbitals. These are too far apart to have a significant overlap. So we do not have a conjugated system over here, which means that this does not get any extra stability. Remember that if something was conjugated, it would have more, have more stability. So which is more stable, the uh, so we would expect, uh, again, this is not getting that extra con uh, stability from conjugation. Also, by the way, let me remind you that we need to have side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. I think in the video series, you saw the difference between that and head-to-head -head overlapping p orbitals. It's also possible for p two, two p orbitals to overlap like this, but that would not con be part of a, of a pi uh, bond or pi electrons. This is head-to-head -head overlap. This is not what we're talking about in conjugation. And you can see why, because the whole idea of conjugated is we want to have a whole series of overlapping. Well, you can't really get that series of overlap with head-to-head -head overlap, but we can get it with all these orbitals that are parallel to each other. That last example, again, was not conjugated. Let's go through, when you're ready, and put in all the hybridization here. how to find all those hybridizations in that other video series. These are all sp2. Is this molecule conjugated? Um, 
Does this atom have VP orbitals? Yes. How about this one? Yes. And how about this one? Yep. So does this satisfy our characteristic for conjugated? Yes. Yes, it does. How many electrons is this p orbital contributing? Was well, contributing this electron to the pi bond, and this p orbital is contributing this electron to the pi bond. By the way, these are called now pi electrons. The pi electrons are the electrons in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. That was a definition that was in that other series of videos. Pi electrons. Of course, we knew these are pi electrons because they're in a pi bond. But the more general definition is that they're in side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. That makes them pi electrons. Now, how many electrons is this orbital contributing? None. Because this is a carbocation, it doesn't have any electrons to contribute. This is an empty orbital. That might have been what gave you pause and maybe not quite sure whether this is conjugated. But we didn't say that the orbitals had to all be contributing electrons. Uh, even if an orbital doesn't have any electrons in it, so to speak, it still exists. It's just like an empty pocket. A pocket still exists even if there's nothing in it. So this is still overlapping with these other electrons. And in a sense, it's not really right to say that this is empty. It's not contributing any electrons. But remember that these two electrons over here are really a cloud that are going to be spread over all three of these p orbitals. So even though I've drawn them as dots over here, we should really think of them as spread out into this orbital as well. Okay. So this is a conjugated system. You can see that if we draw the other resonance structure here. Can you use electron pushing arrows to draw the other resonance structure? Don't forget that there's a positive charge on the right hand carbon. Now can we use electron pushing arrows to show what the other resonance, to, to form the other resonance structure here? That's right. That's the correct electron pushing arrow. And now we need to show what it would look like. Right. Now as usual, if we take our time, the electron pushing arrow should tell us exactly what the new molecule looks like. The electron pushing arrow gives us the directions for what changes to make. So far, so good. Okay, that's right. If we can get the right electron pushing arrow, the rest of the problem should be straightforward because the arrow tells us what to do. This arrow tells us that we can redraw a new picture where we move these electrons from here to here. And then we have to adjust the charges at the initial tail and the final head, just like if this was a reaction. Well, this is the atom at the final head that's gaining the electron. So it goes from positive to neutral. And who's the, who's the atom that was losing the electrons? This is the atom that's losing the electrons at the initial tail, so it goes to positive. And this really reinforces the point I was making a second ago that, in fact, these two electrons are spread over all three of these orbitals. Now, in this picture, it looks like the two electrons are localized between these two orbitals. While well, neither of these two pictures is completely accurate, the true molecule is a blend. In reality, the, three electrons are, the, the two electrons are spread over all three of these orbitals. So again, we're seeing how these side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals are really the basis of resonance. The reason why we can draw different resonance structures is, because, is when we have these side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. Normally, carbocations are not very happy. In fact, you might remember that normally we can't even form primary carbocations. This is a primary carbocation. Normally we couldn't even form a primary carbocation, but it's okay to form this primary carbocation because it's stabilized by resonance. Or another way that we could put it is it's stabilized by being part of a conjugated system. It's, it, what is that called? An allylic carbon? Is that what it's that's right. That's yeah, good that you remember that. This is called allylic carbon. An allylic carbon is a carbon that's attached to a alkene carbon. This is a little because it's attached to an alkene carbon over here. So another way of putting this then is that it's okay to form primary carbocations if they are allylic. But it's important to see why that is because the, the positive charge is stabilized by resonance. So again, now we're seeing that even this picture is kind of misleading because it makes it look like these two electrons are just in this region when in reality, in a sense, they're spread over the entire region. 